In the throes of a pandemic, there's one thing you can count on, mass panic. But as people rush to stores to get their hands on lockdown essentials from toilet paper to face masks, many are met with empty shelves. Why? Just ask Matt Colvin, the guy who bought 18,000 bottles of hand sanitizer and landed himself in a whole load of trouble. When the first coronavirus-related death in the U.S. was announced on March 1st, Matt Colvin and his brother Noah were driving around their hometown of Chattanooga, Tennessee on an important shopping trip. Traveling from the local Dollar Tree to Walmart, Staples, and Home Depot, the brothers piled their carts high with as much hand sanitizer as they could find. Over the next three days, Noah embarked on a 1,300-mile state-to-state road trip across Tennessee and Kentucky, filling an entire U-Haul truck with thousands of virus-related supplies from smaller stores. Meanwhile, Matt stayed at home receiving numerous online orders of sanitizers, antibacterial wipes, and face masks and housing them in a nearby storage unit. In total, the pair spent somewhere between $10,000 and $15,000 on the supplies. You might assume that they were just massive hypochondriacs, but you'd be wrong. To put it plainly, this hysterical panic buying was nothing but a thinly veiled guise for a simple get-rich-quick scheme. And boy, did it backfire. How could Matt Colvin be sure that flogging hand sanitizer on the internet would make big bucks? Well, this wasn't his first rodeo. As the spread of COVID-19 in China gained media attention in early February, Colvin got wind that a local liquidation firm were selling 2,000 pandemic packs of leftovers from a defunct company. Each pack contained 50 face masks, four small bottles of hand sanitizer, and a thermometer, and retailed for $5 a pop. Anticipating that the outbreak would soon make similar waves at home, Colvin had a light bulb moment. He haggled with the seller and purchased all 2,000 packs for a cool $3.50 each then quickly sold all 2,000 of the 50 packs of masks on eBay for around $40 to $50 a piece. Although Colvin refused to disclose the substantial profit he made, it's safe to assume that at the maximum asking price of $50 each, he could have raked in a whopping $100,000. That's 10 times more than their retail value and a tidy $93,000 profit on the 7,000 he paid for the packs originally. Colvin is no stranger to the art of online selling, since joining Amazon and eBay 10 years ago, he's turned it into a six-figure career by chasing trends and selling anything from Nike shoes to pet toys. Once he and Noah had collected a staggering 18,000 bottles of sanitizer, Matt initially listed 300 items online and watched as every single one sold from anywhere between $8 to $70 each. Let's imagine all 300 went for $70. That's a maximum of another 21 grand in his pocket. It's no wonder he got it crazy money. Unfortunately for Colvin though, that's where the fun ended. As hospitals were forced to ration crucial virus supplies and those in need struggled to find basic preventatives in stores, business savvy online sellers were listing products online at extortionate prices and people kept buying them. This left sites like Amazon and eBay in a tricky position. And as search terms like Purell, N95 mask and Clorox wipes soared, so too did the prices. This graph shows that between January and March 2020, listings of disinfecting wipes, hand sanitizer, and N95 masks by third-party sellers like Colvin continued to spike, some hitting highs of $150. As Amazon claims roughly 15% of third-party sales profits and eBay takes about 10%, the companies were under serious pressure to put a halt to these lucrative money-making schemes. Just as the dollar signs really started to roll in Colvin's eyes, Amazon acted fast by pulling his listings and thousands of others like it, followed by a stern warning that anyone hoping to profit from the pandemic would have their accounts suspended if they persisted. By the 11th of March, both eBay and Amazon had taken things a step further by implementing stricter measures to prevent certain third-party sellers from listing any coronavirus-related products. Anyone with a remaining inventory being held in Amazon's fulfillment centers would, however, be eligible for a reimbursement of the return or disposal fees of these products if they create a so-called removal order before their cutoff date of May 31st, 2020. Suddenly, Matt Colvin was left with 17,700 bottles of hand sanitizer and no way to get rid of them. But that was the least of his worries. As his story went viral, Colvin became public enemy number one, receiving death threats and hate mail, and even reporting that someone turned up to his house late at night. Things were getting serious now, and the next blow came when the Tennessee Attorney General Herbert H. Slattery III slapped the Colvin brothers with a cease and desist, and threatened to investigate them for illegal price gouging. 
anyone found guilty of this in Tennessee could be charged up to $1,000 per violation and a possible six-month jail sentence or worse. Although Colvin was clearly jacking up retail prices to unreasonable amounts for his own financial gain, which is pretty much the very definition of price gouging, he stringently denied the claims. Sure, he may have listed two packs of Purell hand sanitizer, which usually retail for a dollar for an eye-watering $20 a pop, but his prices were totally justified, right? Colvin claimed that prices included his labor and Amazon selling fees, as well as the pricey delivery costs involved in shipping alcohol-based sanitizer, which is deemed a hazardous material. Stockpiling vital commodities in the midst of a global emergency might not seem like a morally sound thing to do to you and me, but Colvin accepted no fault there either. He explained that some parts of the country had limited access to these products, and he was simply fixing inefficiencies in the marketplace by helping to send the supply to the demand at whatever cost. He even went as far as to say, I'm being paid for my public service. Unsurprisingly, people weren't buying it. At first, Colvin had hoped to sell the leftover sanitizer locally, but as the onslaught of negative media attention piled on top of him, he was forced to change his tune. On Sunday, the 15th of March, Colvin helped volunteers from a local church load two-thirds of his remaining product into trucks to be distributed around Tennessee to people in need. Officials from the Tennessee Attorney General's office then seized the other third to give to Kentucky for similar distribution because some of Colvin's supplies had been bought there. You might be wondering what actual consequences Matt Colvin faced for attempting such an absent-minded business plan, besides a few mean tweets. On the same day his remaining stockpile was sent off for donation, Colvin was suspended as a seller on Amazon and eBay, putting an abrupt halt to the income he'd relied on for the past decade. The company he rented a storage locker from to house his products in also responded in a similar manner by kicking him out. But what about those claims about illegal price gouging? Luckily for Colvin, he may have escaped these more serious charges by the skin of his teeth, and it's all down to the wording of the law. The law in Tennessee bars people from charging unreasonable prices for essential goods and services, including gasoline, in direct response to a disaster. That last part is crucial because Tennessee's price gouging law only activates once such a disaster has been officially declared. Fortunately for Colvin, that didn't happen until March 12th, when Governor Bill Lee declared a state of emergency in response to the coronavirus outbreak. By this point, Matt and Noah had already purchased all of their supplies, and thanks to Amazon pulling their existing listings, no sales had been made after that date either. Whether this close shave prompts Colvin to change his ways forever remains to be seen, but there's no doubt he'll never be forgotten as the dude who had to give away 17,700 bottles of hand sanitizer. Do you think Matt Colvin got his just desserts, or do you think he was just making a smart business move? And what do you make of all the panic buying during pandemics? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I'm interested to hear what you have to say about this. Thanks for watching, and make sure you wash your hands.